Buenas tardes. In the previous video, we designed a sequence detector. We noted that the only new component of that design, compared to our earlier bending machines, was how to draw the state diagram. This can get tricky for sequence detectors, so this video will provide three more examples of drawing state diagrams with some new wrinkles thrown in. The first problem asks for detecting the sequence 1101 using a Mealy model. There are also two follow-up questions. The approach for drawing the state diagram is, first, draw one node per bit in the desired sequence. In this problem, four bits means there should be four nodes. On each node, include a state code with enough bits. Two bits will be enough to uniquely distinguish four nodes. Second, draw the sequential arrows with the input number next to them. These are the easiest since they should move in order from A to B to C to D. Finally, draw the non-sequential arrows. These require extra consideration according to these guidelines. Recall that node A indicates no recent bits follow the sequence. Node B indicates that the one most recent bit follows the desired sequence, and so on. With this in mind, try your hand at drawing the state diagram and answering these two questions. Pause the video while you do. Here's the start to my state diagram. I've drawn the four nodes. I've named them A, B, C, and D. I've also indicated the state codes following a binary count. As always, the names and the codes are arbitrary, but it is sensible to follow this simple ascending order. Next, I draw the sequential arrows. The first three are simple. One, one, zero, just follows the sequence. So it moves in alphabetical order. The fourth arrow has a couple more considerations. First, I place a star next to it to indicate the special output signal. Second, I point it to node B. This is because here I am inputting a one and node B means that a one has been input. Why not node C? Because node C means that the last two inputs have been one, one. With this arrow, the last two inputs have been 0, 1. So B is as far along as this input can take me. Lastly, I draw the non-sequential arrows. For this particular sequence, all of the non-sequential zeros take me back to A. But this 1 leaving C might come as a surprise. It loops right back around to C. Why is this? State C indicates that the last two inputs were 1, 1. To reach this arrow, the last two inputs must be 1, 1. Therefore, it takes us to C. A useful way to see this is to imagine the input sequence going 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Well, those last four bits do match our desired sequence, so we need to assert the output at that point. This loop at C keeps the circuit ready no matter how many 1s are input. Then, a zero moves the circuit to D, where the sequence could then maybe be completed. That's it for the state diagram. Now for the short questions. Two flip-flops will be required, one for each bit in the state codes. There will be eight rows in the next state table. Each arrow in the diagram corresponds to one row in the next state table. You could count up all the arrows, or you could take advantage of the fact that there are four nodes, each with two arrows leaving. Now for the next problem. Here we want to detect the same sequence, but using a Moore model. This causes two changes in our approach. First, there will be one more state than in the Mealy model. So a four-bit sequence requires five nodes. Second, that special output star will be placed on the final node rather than next to an individual arrow. Go ahead and try this on your own. Pause the video while you do. Here's the start to my state diagram. There are five nodes to handle the four bit sequence. This has the effect of requiring one extra bit in the state codes. 
Note that the star is placed on node E. That is the state that indicates the sequence has been achieved. Next, we see the sequential arrows. 1, 1, 0, 1 moves in order through the states. Finally, we add the non-sequential arrows. The behavior at nodes A, B, and C actually is identical to what we saw in the previous problem, which makes sense because we are tracking the same sequence. It turns out that any non-sequential input of zero moves the state back to A, and both cases of a non-sequential one move the state to C. We explained previously why this one at C loops back to C. The reasoning is the same for this one at E. The two most recent inputs are one, one, which is the definition of state C. These answers should be easy after what we just discussed. Three flip-flops are needed because there are three bits in the state codes. Unfortunately, this means we need extra hardware for this more design as compared to the melee. Ten rows will be in the next state table because there are ten arrows on this diagram. A silver lining is that this means there will be six don't care conditions on every Carnot map. Now for our final problem. Draw the state diagram for detecting the sequence 000101 using a melee model. This sequence is longer than the others, but your approach should be the same. Pause the video and draw your diagram. There are six bits in the sequence, and this is a melee model. Therefore, there are six nodes in the diagram. For six unique state codes, three bits are needed. No real surprises with the sequential arrows. The final arrow gets the star next to it, and it happens to go back to A, since none of the recent inputs match the desired sequence. And here are the non-sequential arrows. All of these ones point back to A. These two cases of zero are interesting, however. The zero at F goes back to C. Why? because the two most recent inputs are 0, 0, which is exactly what C indicates. The 0 at D stays at D. Why? Because here the three most recent inputs are 0, 0, 0, which is what D indicates. Three flip-flops are required to handle the three bits in the state codes. Also, 12 rows will be in the next state table, because there are six nodes with two arrows leaving each. This concludes our examples of state diagrams for sequence detecting sequential circuits.